Hello everybody, Christopher Beast here. In today's video, we're going to be talking about what the Vigor tutorial doesn't tell you. So, the Vigor tutorial does its best to try and cover everything in the game, but Vigor has a lot of moving pieces and unique little mechanics that to a new player you aren't really introduced to at all. I'm also not really going to talk too much about things that the helpful tutorial tips cover, such as crafting, weapon plans, crates, and other stuff like that. So, first thing that the tutorial doesn't cover, and I think this is perhaps the biggest one, is the signal detector. The tutorial does not mention this mechanic at all, and this mechanic is arguably one of the main mechanics of the game. It is through the signal detector that people who are more kill heavy and combat heavy are able to quickly, you know, fly around the map and find everybody. The signal detector marks everyone on the map, but it also lets everyone on the map know that you've just, you know, marked everyone. And as I said before, it is essential if you are a kill-centric player. Next, safe. Safe is one of the best locations when it comes to loot, and it's a very high concentration of loot in one spot. Safe does let everyone on the map know when you hit it. However, it's normally a defendable point that if you play your cards correctly, you can hold yourself there long enough for the safe to open and for you to get the loot inside. Safe does take a little bit of time to open though, so you have to be careful when going to this POI. The next thing is the other two modes in the game, which are Elimination and Shootout. Elim is a 5v5 mode, where you are given random weapons at the start of a match, and your whoever, whatever team wipes the other team out first, five times, wins. You get XP and food from this, which are both useful things for new players. Shootout is the other of the two modes. This is an FFA mode, or free-for-all mode, where you all just sprint around the map, opening up weapon caches and shooting each other. Whoever gets 20 kills first, or whoever has the most kills by the time the timer runs out, will win the match and as of such get a couple of crates, XP, or food. I've mentioned how you get food from these other two modes, so what does food do? Food can be donated at the back of your shelter to be collected at the end of the week to give you a certain amount of crates as a reward. This is one of the easier ways in the game to get gold and purple crates, which will give you better loot. Speaking of better crates and better loot, the tutorial doesn't really introduce the idea of how other crates work or really how boosters work. So you can boost at the start of the match your loot and your crate level. Your loot level will give you better loot through regular interactables, but your crate level will give you a better uh, crate, you know, a better level of the crate when you get it from the airdrop. Higher level crates give better items, for example, a gold crate is more likely to have gold weapons, gold cosmetics, and crowns, while a white crate is more likely to have ammo, materials, and white weapons. Moving on from there is the time safe and lock container. These two things are new to the newest season of Vigor, but these are much like the original safe in that they are very good loot POIs that will normally not notify most of the map about you using them. A time safe is a, much like the original safe, a small little safe that you have to hit two buttons in order to open. It will notify the entire map when you open it though, so you have to be careful. Lock container is a big container that you have to do three padlocks to unlock. Two padlocks are on the side and one is on the top. You can also shoot these padlocks with your gun, but doing so will notify the entire map and will start a bombardment on you. The next thing is the comm station. The comm station can be used by any player to relocate or change the debuffs on the drop. The debuffs on the drop range from things such as making it lighter, to making it heavier, to making it invisible, to making it have radiation, to making it have extra loot for you. These decisions that you make about the comm station are all described in pretty decent detail at the comm station. There's normally more than one comm station spawn on map, so this is one of the few, you know, POIs that you can use with relative ease. Next thing is the cache. If you find any weird photos while you're looting, this is to point you towards the cache. 
The cache is a buried treasure underneath the ground that will give you decent loot if you can find it. Moving on from there, we have the idea of insurance. If you bring some really good loot out with you, then you probably, if you can afford the crowns, buy some insurance. This will ensure that even after you die, you won't lose your loot. However, insurance does not keep any airdrops you may loot. If you are walking around and you get an airdrop and you die, your insurance will not keep that airdrop. Moving on from there, we have the red crates. Red crates or red boxes are found randomly on the map and they contain an airdrop in them. There is probably a guide on YouTube explaining how to get these the easiest way, but be careful because you will be marked on the map as soon as you get these. Moving on from there, we have the brand new thing called mementos. These are like collectibles. Think of them as the Easter eggs or other things like uh, bobbleheads in other games. These are mostly done just for fun. Uh, the lighters and the trolls at least are. But the vinyls, the newest of the mementos, can be used to give your shelter some sick music to listen to. Moving on from there, we have the blue lock box. The blue lock box is a small little chest of some sort that you can find around the map that is locked with a padlock. These have some pretty decent loot and are not a POI, which means the chance of someone finding you is pretty low. And finally, last but not least, we have environment interactions. There are three in the game at the current moment. The first is if you go near beehives, there's a chance the bees will start to sting you. You can prevent this by avoiding the beehives or wearing armor. Two, cars. Sometimes while you're looting cars, the car alarm will go off, notifying anyone in the area exactly where you are. And finally, cold water. On some of the snowier maps, entering the water will begin to make you take damage and begin to freeze the edges of your screen. Be careful when going near cold water, as this can be fatal. All right. So that's everything that I can think of that the tutorial doesn't cover. I probably missed a couple of details, but hopefully I didn't miss enough for this not to be helpful. I hope you learned something if you're a new player, and if you're from PlayStation, which the release of uh, the PlayStation version of the game was very recently, welcome to the community. I uh, hope you learned some things from my videos, and I hope you appreciate the game. Until next time, everyone, this has been Christopher Beast, and see you all next time.